Hey, 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 what's going on? Welcome to, uh, once again, the Big Time Show podcast that is being seen live here on uh, Facebook and on YouTube and on Periscope. And, of course, it is also being heard live on Podbean, the home of, uh, excuse me, the podcast home of the Big Time Show podcast. Welcome, everybody on this evening i hope your day was great i hope that uh everything is going uh what's going on hey hey y'all i see you wendy hey wendy how you doing donald what's up man what's going on how about them cowboys i see you well we're gonna talk about that tonight uh forgive me for looking down but i'm sharing i see some folks have already shared and i bet that that was wendy who did all that and uh, whoever has shared, uh, thank you so much for sharing the show. I appreciate it. Hey, thank you all for thinking enough of me that, uh, uh, you know, you would think that my show is worth worthy of sharing. I appreciate that uh, so much. Hello to those that are on Podbean uh, or who will be joining on Podbean a little bit later on. Uh, thank you for your confidence and just hang with me for just for a minute. Hey, bro, brother Mike, I see you. What's going on? Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. I'm, I'm forgive me for looking down and not looking directly at you guys. I'm just trying to make sure that I share this. Maybe it's being double shared because somebody has shared this a whole lot already. So, uh, let's just see what can happen. Uh, give me just a couple more seconds. Let me tell you something. Things. Oh, well, first of all, I guess I need to say this. Um, the music that you heard was from, uh, my, um, partner, Alec C. Winters. Uh, you can find him on Instagram. I guess I better, if y'all like that type of music, that smooth jazz type of feel, look right there, go find that name that you see on your screen. Go find that on Instagram for those of you who have Instagram accounts. Go check him out. There are plenty of musical selections, just like what you just heard uh, that I use. And I appreciate him so much for allowing me to use his music uh, for uh, my podcast. I appreciate that. Uh, let me check out Podbean to see if somebody's there. Hey, Glenn, I see you, man. What's up, Glenn? I appreciate you popping in on me, man, and hanging with me. Listen, everybody, I'm here to tell you. Hey, Erica, I see you. Forgive me for not speaking. Listen, I'm here to tell you guys tonight that things are slowly but surely becoming clear. They're, they are becoming very clear, at least from my perspective. Things are becoming extremely clear to me uh with the the building of this team the dallas cowboys of course look if you're talking about the buffalo bills i, I don't know who all on here if y'all looking for any other team other than the cowboys y'all have a good evening and and we'll we'll catch up 
eventually. We don't talk about no other team on on this show here. We only talk about the Dallas Cowboys. So that if, if you want to talk about the Jaguars, if you want to talk about the Chiefs, if you want to talk about all the, uh, you know, I, I I don't deal with no other team. I'm sorry. I don't know nothing about your team. Okay. I, I don't. All I know is the Dallas Cowboys. Of course, I know the stars. I, I know them. I'm not in depth with, 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 you know, with other teams. I'm in depth. I mean, I'm deeply invested into the Dallas Cowboys. So that's all I'm, I'm going to talk about. Unless I was talking about a totally different subject, of course, which I'm not, I'm talking about the Cowboys tonight. Okay. So in my perspective, from my perspective, I'm sorry. I believe tonight that things are becoming extremely clear with the way that this team slowly but surely is being built. There are only a few couple of holes that are left before we really start playing. Uh, you know, we're, we're, we're not that far away from us saying, hey, let's go play football. We're not that far away. We still have a few more holes to fill, just a few, and then we're just going to go ahead and take our chances. We saw that today. We saw it today. There are a couple of clues that we have to hang our hat on from today. If you're a football fan or you've been watching TV, you know that today was the University of Alabama's pro day. You know that. Uh, you know that. And as always, the University of Alabama, Coach Saban, produces – his his team is almost I don't care what year you go to, his team is a pipeline to the NFL. Uh, uh, there's no question about it. The Alabama Crimson Tide sends at least minimum every year at least seven seven guys to the league. Uh, it's no question, and most of them are very high in the draft. Why? Because they're the best best team in the country. Uh, no question about it. And on today, what we had was a whole bunch of first-team All-Americans, or at least second-team All-Americans, that had their pro day there today. Matt Jones, who's the quarterback, is a first-team All-American. Any other year, he would have won the Heisman last year. He was on on display. Uh, the Heisman Trophy winner himself was not on display, but he was there. Devontae Smith, the wide receiver. Jalen Waddle, who was also there, but he did not do his pro day, but he was there. Uh, Alex Leatherwood, the offensive tackle from Alabama, who was an All-American, he was there on display. Dylan Moses who was the linebacker, first-team All-American. He was there on display today. Uh, and most of all, uh, most of all, the one that, that has the Cowboys' attention, and I and I got proof of that today, just in case you didn't know, that he was there, uh, Mr. Patrick Soutain II, was on full display today. And you know that the Cowboys are interested. Why? <clears throat> because Coach Mike McCarthy and defensive coordinator Coach Dan Quinn were there in Alabama today. Now, some folks may argue and say, hey, here some folks may, well, you know, they may have been there to look at Leatherwood to tackle. They may have been there to look at uh, you know, to talk to Jalen Waddle, and um, so they may have been there to talk to Devontae Smith, and, and you know, they yeah, they were there to probably look at certain. I'm here to tell you, they probably didn't look at all of them. Uh, the name Leatherwood, uh, Leatherwood, uh, is not projected to go uh, very high in the first round, but my goodness, he could be there in the second round, he might be there in the second round. That's an offensive tackle uh, that we desperately need. Uh, Jalen Waddle is there, a difference maker, a wide receiver. 
You know, at least you get a chance to talk, even though I don't believe that's our pick, but he's there to talk. But Patrick Soutain was there. I do need to give a little background real quick that set this thing up. I believe that Coach McCarthy and Coach Quinn were going to be there anyway. I mean, no question. However, with the news of Caleb Fairley, the cornerback from Virginia Tech, who will be having back surgery. Uh, hey, hey, uh, hey, Sandor on um, uh, Pop in. Hello. Uh, with Fairley having scheduled surgery coming up on his back, <clears throat> Caleb Fairley is a guy that a lot of Cowboy fans have targeted and said, that's who all the number 10 picked ought to be. Well, with him having back surgery coming up, and this is a kid, he's having the same back surgery, or at least one of them, that I had. I had the same back surgery that Caleb, Caleb Fairley is having as a mastectomy. Uh, forgive me if I pronounced that wrong. Uh, where they go inside your body, of course, and you may have a little bit of your disc that's bulging, or it could be a full herniation of your disc. And what they do is laser it off. That's all that happened. And then you just take your chances. They figure because of this bulge that's happening on your disc, uh, exactly, it's non-invasive, uh, Wendy. They, 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 they clip it off, and then they think that that's the, the issue. Uh However, from a personal experience, I definitely can tell you it's just like a crapshoot. The back is is so hard to it's so hard to 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 determine how a person is going to respond because everybody is different. Uh, for some, that it is the fix. I had it. I still had pain to the point where I, I ended up having to have a second surgery, which, of course, was the back fusion surgery. That's what I've had. So presently right now, as you look at me, I have four screws and two rods in my back. But at first, I had the uh, I had the, the surgery that Kayla Farrell is going to have. Here's the difference. I'm an older man, Okay. It's not good when you got a young kid who's barely in his 20s and he's already having back surgery. So I think it's common sense tonight for all of us to understand for those that wanted Caleb Fairley, I believe that we can go ahead and X him off at least, without a doubt, at the number 10 position. You can, we, I, don't, I believe that would be a foolish pick to pick up Kayla Fairley at 10. So we need to X him off. Now it's universally known. Most people, most people would say that the two highest rated cornerbacks coming into the draft was Patrick Sertain, the second and Kayla Fairley. Well, common sense. Again, if Fairley is off the board now, then Patrick Sertain, number one, probably will be the first defensive player taken in the draft. And he will be taken in the top 10 to top 12. No question about it. Uh, he will be. So we, we're talking about, number one, the SEC defensive player of the year. Now, I understand that's a lot of you saying, well, hey, that's college. This, this is the NFL. But please, let's not ignore the obvious. Here's the obvious. If you're the player of the year in the SEC, I didn't say in the, in the Mountain Western Conference. I, I, I didn't say in the, in the pick pack. I ain't talking about the pick pack uh, conference. I know. If you are the player of the year, defensive player of the year in the SEC, that does hold some weight. It does. Why? Because it's known that the SEC is the best conference in all of college football where pretty much these young guys 
are playing other young guys that are going to be pros themselves. If when Alabama plays LSU, my God, at least 20 of them are playing, will be playing on Sundays. When they play Florida, Florida is sending people, obviously, to the league. You, I mean, you can go to Kentucky, Vanderbilt, when my nephew plays at Vanderbilt. Uh, I, I mean, the list go on and on. Mississippi State, all of these great at Texas A&M, all these great SEC schools, when you look at the NFL and find out where these guys came from, you will be saying, like, my goodness, this is nothing but the SEC. It's, it's plenty all over the league. So certain comes in with a lot of weight. Here's part two of him. And I get to the minute, and I'm, and I'm setting something up so I can, you know, say what I got to say, and then I'm going to let y'all go in and y'all can enjoy the rest of the evening. Patrick Sertain, also, for those that don't know, Patrick Sertain is the son of Patrick Sertain Sr. Who is he? A three-time Pro Bowl cornerback in his own right. His daddy was. A veteran in the league known as a pretty good cornerback in his own right. So what does that tell you? The kid got pedigree. His daddy can teach him something because he's playing the same position that he played when he was playing pro ball and excelled at it. He was a Pro Bowl cornerback. So the kid just not coming in as a blank sheet of white paper. This kid, this, this kid, it comes with a little weight on him, okay? Not only that, he was the first team, he was a first team All-American himself. I, okay, Wendy said, Wendy said she sold. I, I'm not through yet, Wendy. I got just a little bit more evidence, okay? I got a little bit more evidence. He's already known as the is pretty much the top cornerback coming into the league. He is. There's no question about that. But he solidified all that today at Pro Day. All I'm gonna do is just read read you what happened. Okay, these are the facts. There was a question about his speed. That that was the only real question about him was his speed. This is what happened today at his Pro Day. He ran, first of all, he's six foot, 208 pounds. Now, for those that don't understand football from a cornerback position, six foot, 208 pounds, that means he is a very large cornerback. That's a big cornerback. Six foot, 208. Donna, I agree with you 100%. Donald says that he don't like the idea of a rookie starting opposite of this. I get it. I get it. I get it. I've said that myself, and I'm sticking to it. I'll just go ahead and, and say that ahead of time. However, however, he ran. Listen, he's six foot 208, and at today's pro day, he ran the 40 twice. 40-yard dash twice. The first time he ran it, he ran a 4-4-2, 40. Six-foot, 208, and ran a 4-4-2, Second time he ran, he ran a 4-4-5, 40. Translation, he's pretty fast. <coughs> Excuse me. Not only is he big <clears throat> as a corner, he can move. He's fast. Okay? And he's young. And he comes with pedigree. That ain't all. Wendy, I got I Wendy, I got some more evidence if you still here. Wendy, if you still here, Wendy, I got hey, hey, Ryan, hey, Emmanuel. Yeah, he proved a lot of stuff today. Okay, watch this. 
They took him around after he ran, or they did it before he ran, and they lined him up to measure his vertical jump. I know some of y'all saw it now. I, if you didn't, it's probably on YouTube by now. Just, just, just pull it up when you can. He jumped. His vertical is 39 feet high now from a standing position. I don't, <laughs> that's, that's, that's freakish. The man, y'all look at it yourself when y'all, when y'all leave me, y'all check it out. Look, the man jumped and, and I couldn't believe what I saw. Ed, Wendy, you might well say he flew. I, I, I couldn't believe what I saw. Hey, Miss Ty, I see you done slipped in on Power Bean. I, 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 it's on the internet. Look, for those who got your TVs on, y'all turn on NFL channel. Matthew says it's on now. Go if you if you got it, go look and see how high this man jumped. In other words, you know, translation in game time, you know, he didn't have pads on, but let's just be honest. Hey, if you can jump 39 feet high, pads may knock you down a little bit. So they might turn into maybe about a 37. That's that's jumping. In other words, jump balls, he can go get it. There's not too many people can jump like that. This kid is freakish. I didn't know he was this freakish, but he's freakish. I didn't know it. He he's not Jalen Ramsey freakish now. That I ain't seen nothing like Jalen Ramsey at, 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 at Pro Day. Okay. Emmanuel says rookie or not. I'll take him next to Diggs. I'm not 100% sold on that, Emmanuel, and I'll tell you why in just a second. But he's freakish. Here's the part that nobody talks about. And this is the reason why Emmanuel and uh, who said that, who said they wouldn't, uh, hey, Ryan, uh, who said that they wouldn't put him beside Diggs? Let me let me go back up and look. Uh, Donald. Donald said that. Here it is, Donald. I didn't think about this till later on. But, hey, 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 what's up, Gary? Now, my, my partner Gary here is a J.C. Horn fan. No question about it. And J.C. Horn is the truth, too. He, 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 he is the truth. But here, but I think they got the eyes on Sir Tang. I really do. Uh, I really do. Here's the thing, though, about Sir Tang that, that's not in the scouting book. Can you imagine the practices that Sir Tang had? I mean, good Lord of mercy. He was going against Devontae Smith every day. And if y'all seen Devontae Smith play football, come on here. Y'all know. He was going against Jalen Waddle every day in practice. You talk about getting baptized early. I don't think we can take that for granted. I, I I'm sorry. If you're going against the best player in the country every day, you're going against the Heisman Trophy winner every day. You're going against the best wide receiver in Devontae Smith every day. And then if you're not going against him, you're going against Jalen Waddle, who's going to be a top 10 pick. And many would say that if Jalen Waddle would have got hurt, Jalen Waddle would have been the man at Alabama. Most people say the reason why Smith went off is because Waddle went down. Thank you, Matt. And, 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 and please, let's not forget what Matt just said because all of this count. We're talking about the greatest we, 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 you, you good, Gary. We talking about the greatest coach in, in the history of the game who is known as a defensive coach. That's the part you didn't say, Matt. Nick Saban is known universally as a great defensive man. 
Now, I'm not saying Sertain didn't get beat up because there's film that Kyle Pitts ate him alive when Florida played Alabama. But but Pitts is a, you know, I mean, come on. Pitt, Pitts is, is is once in in a 15, every 15-year 15 type player. He, he's different. Uh, okay. I don't know who Ryan is, but I don't know who your brother is, but there he is. Okay. Um, uh, I think we got to put all that into the pot and mix it around. Certain is pro ready right now. I ain't never took him. Say, you know, I ain't never took it away from him. I, if it was my choice. I would, I would want, I would want Pitts. I mean, everybody knows what I'm, what I'm saying about Pitts. Everybody said that, and I wanted fairly myself over certain, only because I see just a little bit more bite, dog, and and fairly than I see certain. But make no mistake about it, certain. Is is just more polished, okay? He's just he he's more a little more prof, you know, what's the word? I, I almost want to say more. Pro, he's more of a professional corner. He's real smooth. He he he's he can play. Ain't no question. He just ain't. He just not that dog, dog, real dog, dog that I like. He's a dog though, but he's not the, you know. Let me say that. See, if I say a pit bull right there, you know the pit bull will come to take a chunk out of you. You know that. You know that. Certain is more of a a Doberman. You know. You know, a, a Doberman will get a hold. A Doberman will, will get you too, but they're, they're, they're more smarter. You know, Doberman is known as. The, yeah, you know, the German shepherds are known as you know the smart dogs and the smart real big dog. Fairly is more of a, a a pit bull. He's a dog, but 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 you know, certain is a he's a dog now. He's a dog. He is. He's a dog, but he he's more of a a well polished dog. You know, he don't have no slob coming down the side of his mouth. <laughs> You know, he, he, you know, them pits, them pits got the, you know, pit bulls, they, 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 they just slobbing everywhere. You know, I, you see what I'm saying? A dog, both of them will get you now. But that's what I want. I want attitude on this team. And I'm not saying certain won't bring it. It's just that he's more polished. Now to go back to what Donald said. I don't trust rookie cornerbacks. I don't because I know they're going to get beat up. We saw it with Diggs last year, them first few games. Diggs really didn't catch his rhythm until about week six or seven, and then he got hurt. And then when he came back, he was uh he was pretty good. <laughs> Wendy said you got to cut a, a pit pit's head off once he bites is over. That's what fairly is to me. And let me let me agree with Gary Bryant who's on here. Gary said to J.C. Horn, J.C. Horn is a dog. J.C. Horn is a dog. No question about it. And, and I would be happy with him there, but J.C. Horn is not going to go top 10. With Caleb Farrell having back surgery, certain is now probably going to be the first defensive player off the board. No question about it. And when Mike McCarthy there and Dan Quinn there today for the pro day, even though, you know, everybody else was there too, it it is it, is it, it really lets me, you know, know I don't think they were there to watch Matt Jones. Uh Devontae Smith and, and Jalen Water did not do anything today at all. They they may have talked to him, but I uh, I know they ain't do nothing. They may have been there to also look at Alex Leatherwood, the offensive tackle. I I will probably 
say, I probably would say that. Uh, they may have been there to look at Dylan Moses, the linebacker. But I really believe they were there to watch um, Patrick Sertain. Now, here's the thing, though, uh, Gary. When J.C. has his pro day, my only question will be, and, you know, this is about chess. You know, people playing chess right now. Uh, oh, yeah, the DT. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, the running back, the running back also had his pro day, too. Hey, mama, I see my mama's here. Uh, exactly. Uh, Harris, the running back was there, too. So, uh, you know, hey, I don't think they were there to watch him. But Mr. Harris is, is uh, and he didn't, uh, he didn't do anything. Uh, Ryan, I don't know what did you ask. I'm sorry, I'm not looking directly at the comments now. I don't know what you what you're asking, Ryan. Just go ahead and ask me now. I'll say what it is, whatever you want. Uh, cause we don't want to lose you. Uh, by no means, we appreciate you just showing up and uh, uh, just hanging with us. For those that are watching, hey, we we're nice on this show. We we ain't knocking nobody. Okay. Uh, oh, okay, okay. I see you when. Whatever he asking, hey, let's. If I see it, I answer it. If not, you guys in the chat box help Ryan out. Uh, so he doesn't know the game. Okay, well, we'll figure, we'll help him. But we we they were there to watch certain, and if they were there to watch certain, you left without a doubt. You left without a doubt. More impressed than when you came into the door. No question. I was impressed by what Sir Tang did. I mean, I, I we already got plenty of film on him. The, I believe that the practices were harder than the games. I, I'm just I'm just saying, you're going up against Devontae Smith every day and Jalen Waddle. Look, you, it don't get no tougher than that. I don't care nothing about Chase. Chase, uh, Chase from LSU. Look, when you go against Devontae Smith every day, or you go against Waddle, you're going against the best in, in college football, wide receivers. No question in my mind. So they had to be impressed. I believe that the Cowboys are leaning that way, despite me not wanting. Now, you know, I personally want Pitts. However, after what Pitts did at his pro day, there is no way in the world that Kyle Pitts is going to fall to Dallas at 10. There's just no way. It's no way. For those that don't know, I'm just going to say one thing about Kyle Pitts. He is a tight end, tight end. He is a tight end. And he ran a 4-4, four, four, whatever, 40 as a tight end. What? <laughs> huh? Look, a tight end ran just as fast as a wide receiver. A big guy. Help me out, somebody, here, because I don't have his measurements on. How tall is Kyle Pitts? No, I, I pull it up. Let, let me just let me just look at it. I, cause, cause, I, look, guys like him. Did guys like him don't come around too often? He's a once in a generation. Oh, Kyle Pitts Donald said ran a four four six forty. Do y'all understand that? That's a tight end. That 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 that's incredible. Listen to this, Kyle Pitts. Let me look. Oh my God. My God. Look. look. Cal, okay, Manuel says let let Sertain take his licks early in the season so he'll be ready in the season going to the playoff. Well, that's what they did with Diggs. So, and I think Diggs is going to be eventually a Pro Bowl corner. I got that much confidence in Diggs. Sertain and Diggs played together. So let's let's also throw this in. Please understand 
that Diggs is speaking up for his boy, um, uh, is going is speaking up for his boy Sertain in the ears of everybody that will listen. They played together at Alabama. So you know he's speaking up for him, saying, hey, this is what we need. Uh I'm 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 moving Wendy. I'm moving to Pitts. And I'm convinced now that Pitts won't be there for us. That's who I want. But I don't think it's going to happen. Pitts is 6'6", 240 pounds. And this large man, this tall man, ran a 4'4", 640. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Look, if you haven't seen Kyle Pitts play, just pick up, just go to YouTube and just watch Pitts. He is a nightmare. I've I've already told y'all, I'm already saying before the kid even plays one down in the league, barring injury or barring a a, a career ending injury. I'm telling y'all right now, this kid is a hall will be a Hall of Fame football player. I'm already on record. That's how much I believe in him. He I ain't he don't have Pro Bowl talent. He doesn't have all pro talent. This kid has Hall of Fame talent. And some of y'all always say he ain't played a down yet. Look, when your eyes see what you see, you know, you know something different. This kid is different. Matt says, so you want to tie it in, and we got two young ones right now. Uh, Blake Bell is gone. Dalton Schultz, as I said in pre my previous shows, Dalton Schultz, Schultz played uh, great last year. He proved to everybody he can play the tight end position. Both of them will be good. I ask you this, Matt. Which one would you rather be scared? Which one would you be scared of when we go to a two tight tight end set? Would you be more scared of Blake Jarwin and Dalton Schultz? Or would you be more scared of Blake Jarwin and Blake uh and Kyle Pitts? I already know the answer to that question. I answer for you. You'll take the latter. Kyle Pitt, look, if you insert Kyle Pitts in this lineup that we already have, we would be unguardable. I, I, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just saying, Matt, go, go with me, Matt. I, I, I know what you're saying. Go with me here. If you put Kyle Pitts on this team, come, come, just, just, just stay with me. If you run a three wide receiver set with one tight end, you're telling me that you will have Mari Cooper on one end, Gallup on the outside, Lamb in the slot, and Kyle Pitts at tight end? And I, and I make it even more scary for you. And Ezekiel Elliott in the backfield? Can you imagine the stress that a defensive coordinator will have messing, trying to figure this out. Who you gonna double? I mean, I mean, what? Who? Who? Who are you gonna take out? Who are you willing? What poison do you want? I'm, I'm just saying, man. I, I mean, I realize we got two tight tight ends, and I know they're great. I'm just saying. Imagine that. Who? What? Who are you gonna lead? So you can double only one. Okay, pick pick whichever one you want to double. You go you go double Cooper. Okay, Pitts one on one with your linebacker. He runs a four four six forty. Ain't no linebacker gonna be able to keep up with him. Okay, we are gonna put a nickel cornerback on him. Okay, Kyle Pitts is six six. He's two forty, which means he can box a little cornerback out, and he can outrun a lot of cornerbacks. I mean, if that's what you want to pick one on one. Okay, you gonna leave Lamb, CD Lamb, one one on one on one. What what you gonna <laughs> you gonna leave CD 
Huh? This is what I'm talking about. I, I'm saying, look, and, and, and if you notice now, if you notice, if you notice, if you looked inside our division, and if you've been seeing the signings like, like the Giants have done today or yesterday, and if you've seen what what we know that Washington is going to even be better than they were last year defensively, especially since they got uh, the quarterback, Jackson, uh, from I believe from Cincinnati. I believe I'm right about that. Look, we better put some points on the board. You put Pitts on this team, man. That will have. I, 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 it, 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 look, with with the team we got now, we scoring. We scoring 28, 30 points with the team we got now. You put Pitts on this team, you're going to another level. There is no question in my mind. That's why I want them, because I want to go ahead and, and 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 go for people's throats. Y'all forgive me, but you know, I know I'm a preacher, but I, man, we talking football now. I I I I wanna I wanna go ahead and go and go get folks. I wanna go and put 35 on them. And somebody gonna be saying, Well, we can't stop nobody. Yes, you can, because you got the rest of the draft. You got the rest of the draft. But because Kyle Pitts showed completely out at his pro day, he will not be there. And I hate to say this, and I really do. I really do believe that the Philadelphia Eagles are going to pick him up. And I do not want that. I, do, I, don't, I don't want that. I, 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 I don't want to see Philadelphia with, with Kyle Pitts. I don't want to have to deal with this for the next eight to 10 years, uh, twice a year. I don't want to see him. I don't. He's that dangerous. Ain't no question in my mind. He is that dangerous. Now, I'm shifting again, Wendy. Check out this shift. Check out this shift. Oh, I see you, Coach Bree Love. Hey, appreciate you, Coach. I see you. I'm going to shift again. Now, because I am in agreement with Donald, okay, I'm not sold on a second-year corner and a rookie corner as our starters. The second corner would be Diggs. Sir Tain would be a starter. And if he's not in the first game or whatever, he will be. You don't draft nobody at 10 and have him sitting on the bench. So Sir Tain would be starting. I ain't sold on that. You know, that's rookies. And I don't know if the Cowboys really are either. I, 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 they could be. They may not be. Most people are not. Pitts won't be there. Okay? Pitts won't be there at 10. Which now leads me to a real, as I said on yesterday on the preview, I believe Wendy called it vanilla. Go ahead and get it crunk up, Wendy. The vanilla pick, but would be actually a very great pick. Even though it's not sexy, it's not a showroom floor type of a pick. Everybody else I done called out a showroom floor, including Sir Tang. Exactly, no sprinkles would be Slater. He has a pedigree. Paul, exactly. Uh, uh, he, he can run, but he a rookie. See, rookie starting cornerbacks in the league, there ain't been too many that really thrived. You got to go back to, well, we ain't got to go too far. We got to go to Jalen Ramsey. He was about the last one that came in as a rookie and was the dog. You got to go back probably before the end to Dion. So we talking a real gap here as a rookie who started. The sexy pick is not, is not sexy. If Pitts is not there, which I don't think he will be, 
Okay. If we don't go certain, if certain is gone, or if we don't go certain, the real conservative, safe, solid, great pick would be Slater. The offensive lineman from Northwestern. Why is he? Why would that be the, a good pick? Number one, he can play guard. I hear you, Paul. I'm going to come to Parsons in a second. Thank you for joining, Paul. Uh, thank you, Donald. Mr. Slater, Rashawn Slater from, from Northwestern. We know he, he's a tackle. We know that. But he can also play guard. And since he has position position flex, exactly, Paul. But here's my thing, Paul. Paul, check check me out here. We're drafting ten at number ten. If the guys are not there, if you made a decision, see two things can happen. I'll come back. If the Cowboys go and get a corner in free agency, and I'm talking a corner like. Malcolm Butler, Malcolm Butler will become your starter automatically, automatically, okay? Uh, so there would be no need to draft a corner at 10 if you go get Malcolm Butler, okay? So that that, that would eliminate that. If you go get uh, Sherman, I would say, you know, you know, you're going to get a respect to Sherman to let him play. Uh, you know, so you, it just all depend on where you're at. Yeah, I, I know. I know. I, I, I'm i not I'm not saying, look, if you draft Sertain at 10, he's going to play. I mean, I just don't like it. I don't like rookie cornerbacks. I don't have six or seven weeks to, you know, to do experiment and, and, and let them – Go and I got you, Paul. You gotta let him play. That's what they did with Diggs. I'm not arguing because that's exactly what they did with Diggs. So, so they let him play, and Diggs got tore up in the first four to five weeks. Now we all saw that. Now he got much better uh, as time went on, and when he got hurt, when he came back, he was still pretty good. So he, you could tell he advanced. You, no question about that. I just don't like it because I don't have. We don't have time to be experimenting. I, that's just me. And who knows? Certain may come in and be just as, you know, he could be just as dominant. I just don't like it. How much was that digs and then come to safe play? I think it's a mixture of both, uh, Paul. Uh, there were a lot of times that they lined them up to go one-on-one -on -one, uh, zone coverage which, you know, includes safety, help, and all that kind of stuff. A lot of – there was sometimes he was, uh, uh, you know, out of position. He did get beat up a couple of times playing one-on-one. -on -one. We saw that. But he got better. He did get better. And if and since you're just doing it, I believe Diggs will eventually be a Pro Bowl cornerback. I think he's that good. Uh, certain, as I just said, you missed me earlier – I went by that. Hey, E. Kush, I see you, brother. Uh, I said that about certain, uh, Paul, is that uh, I'll give you two things. Number one, his father was a cornerback. Uh, he was a three-time pro bowler in his own right. Patrick Sertain Sr., uh, known as a, as a real good cornerback. No question about that. So he learned from his daddy. Here's the second thing. He learned from Nick Saban. Okay, we're talking about the greatest college football coach ever. Uh, we're talking about a defensive mind in Nick Saban. And finally, uh, Paul, here's the third one, which I think is most important. Nobody ain't said this. But Patrick Sertain every day in practice, Paul, was going against Devontae Smith and Jalen Waddle. Every day in practice. I, it don't get no better than that. 
I mean, you're going against the Heisman Trophy winner every day. The game was easy. <laughs> and yeah, in, I said in Waddle, yeah. These are this is who he saw every day in practice. When it came to game time, it, it that I mean that was nothing. I don't care. And Pope, when you talk about Jamar Chase from LSU, look, when you go against the Jalen Waddle and Devontae Smith every day in practice, look, that's iron sharpening and iron. And and because he got to see that every year, I mean all year long. This kid is ready to play right now. Exactly. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Paul, for adding that in. I, I, I forgot about that. I ain't want to say that. But but the quarterback, Matt Jones, was a first-team All-American. Matt Jones is better because he played Patrick Sertain. That's who he had to go against in practice. I mean, it don't get no better. Look, it don't get no better than that. This was a war every day in practice. Sertain is ready to play. Now, there's a difference now. I'm not trying to say that Devontae Smith is 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 is, uh, is is Diggs from Buffalo. I'm not saying he's Julio Jones. You know, I'm not saying uh I I, I, I don't know. I don't know, you know, all of the Pro Bowl uh, wide receivers, but Sertain is just about one of these guys. It don't get too much better prepared to play than Patrick Sertain. I, I, I'm just calling it like it is. Do I want it? No, I don't. I already told you who I want. I want Diggs. I mean, excuse me, I want Pitts. I want him. But I ain't gonna be mad if we get certain. I'm let's not get crazy. I'm not I'm not crazy now. Oh, oh, he cush. He was awesome today. Oh, he cush. Cush, uh it, it cush. He uh, look, whatever, whatever little things we had for certain, he erased all of them today. Now I don't, that don't mean that you might want them or whatever, but that look, he he exactly. Yeah, I already said that, Paul. He's not he's not gonna be there. Uh, 30 years, Ryan says, okay. I don't know what you're talking about, Ryan, but, uh, somebody knows what Ryan is talking about. Help, help Ryan out real quick. Um, oh, Wendy told me, uh, well, E. Kush, I already know, cause Kush, E. Kush, you saw what his vertical was, right? A 39 inch vertical. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. The but the kid can jump out the gym. Paul says, appreciate you, Paul. Uh yeah, he, he jumped the 39 in. Paul said, I run defense suck last year. What about linebacker help? Okay, then that shifts me to Parsons now. To be honest with you, uh, Paul, from what the reports are saying. I really don't even believe that Parsons is even in the in the picture now. Because of the signing of Neil. He right, right, Kush. He Kush, that that's freakish what Sertain did today. That that that's 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 the kind of stuff that's unheard of. Uh I don't think Parsons, for those that were calling out Parsons before, I don't even think Parsons is even in the in the in the equation now. Because remember what the reports are. The reports are saying that they are going to play Neil at weak side linebacker. I'm not saying we're not going to get more def- another linebacker, but I don't see not with the tenth pick. So Parsons, I don't think Parsons is not is not going to be there. I just don't think he's going to be there, but I don't think we'll pick him up. And I like Parsons. He's a dog. Parsons would knock your head off. I like that. Paul says LV needs to be benched. Well, I'm going to give LV a little leniency here, Paul. And I'll tell you why. He's played most of his career hurt. 
And so I give him credit for his heart to play. I give him his credit for, for his heart to play. He, he's played a lot injured. When he was fully healthy, he was an all-pro. Don't forget that. His rookie year, LV was an all – now, I ain't say pro bowler. I said an all-pro. Y'all check that out. He was an all-pro. He's been hurt ever since. He just can't stay healthy. Well, boy, I'm saying, well, you know football. If the defensive line can't hold the offensive lineman from getting to the linebackers, there's no linebacker going gonna, to gonna, uh, function too well. Defensive line was getting destroyed last year. We all know that. That's why they made all these signings and free agency. Because even though they're not sexy free agents, when you look at pro football focus, the guys that they signed were pretty good against the run. I'm talking about real high grades against the run. So the so the so the plan is real clear. Stuff the offensive line so that the running back, I mean your linebackers can run free and go make plays. Uh that's what I think. You know, it, it all goes together, but LVE, uh, you know, he was hurt most of the last year. There's no question about that. And if he playing hurt, then, you know, we got to give him a little, just a little break, just a little, just a little. Uh, there are too many, Paul said, too many played where he was misdiagnosed, run plays. They all did that, Paul. What people don't know is the LVE is in his fifth year playing 11-man ball. That's true. We all know that he played that little seven-man ball, which means he's real good in open field. That's what a lot of people were uh, impressed about LVE, great open field tackle. Matt says, this year that Jerry Jones can make the big splash in the draft, and we end up with two first-round picks in this year's draft. No, I don't think so, Matt. Yeah, I don't think so, man. I don't think there's no way we can do that unless we train a guy away. And I don't think we don't have a guy that's that we're worth talking about trading that will give us generate a number one pick. Uh, most people are talking about Gallup getting traded, but Gallup probably wouldn't give us a, a number one pick. I don't see that. He could say Piss is his number one guy on his list if we decide to go offense, but I think the Eagles – have a better shot at him. I said the same thing earlier, because I said I don't think Philadelphia is going to let them pass, and they right above us. I think they're picking eighth. Am I right about that, somebody? I think Philly's picking eighth. I don't know. I may be wrong. I may be wrong. Yeah, exactly, because I've already said I said the same thing. Pitts is, is, is my wish. He would make this offense unguardable. Uh, he, 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 he would take this, this offense to a different place that we've never seen before. Dak would have every weapon at his disposal. Killers everywhere. Oh, no. Gallup is not going anywhere. Uh, I don't think he's going to be there. So my question to you guys, for those that are on here, uh, I kind of gave you my scenarios. I told you, I'll go over it again. I don't think Pitts is going to be there. I just don't think he's going to be there. So we got a few choices now that I think is going to happen. Keep in mind, Coach McCarthy and Dan Quinn, our defensive coordinator, were there at Alabama today. Uh, I hope we address linebacker in the second or third round. Then you need to try to get Shelvin third. Yeah, Shelvin is, is a dog, third or fourth. Uh, I believe that we're going, and, and Quiz is kept now, Paul. Keep in mind that Coach McCarthy and Quinn were there in Alabama. Now, most people are really thinking that we were there to look at Mr. Sertain. I would almost tell you that they were also there to look at Dylan Moses, the linebacker from Alabama, who will go later in the rounds too. 
I, I'm, I'm just saying, because as we know, I agree with you, Paul, that we need linebacker help too. I believe that they had their eyes on Dylan Moses too. I believe that. I believe they got, I believe they knocked two birds out with one stone. I believe they were there. I believe that, to be honest with you, I believe they were there looking at three people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe they were looking at three people. I think they were there to look at Sir Tane. I believe they were also there to look at Dylan Moses. And I also believe they were there to look at Alex Leatherwood, the offensive tackle from Alabama. I just named y'all three All-Americans, too. But this is where I was going with, Mike. Thank you. Mike says, if the Cowboys couldn't land Slater, Sertain, or Pitts at 10, would I settle for Waddle? Well, according to what according to what Coach McCarthy said, exactly. What Coach McCarthy said last year, let's remember. When C.D. Lamb failed to us, Coach McCarthy, after they picked C.D. Lamb, you got to remember that night, remember that, or excuse me, it was so late, it was the next day where they came in and talked about their first-round draft pick. Coach McCarthy said this, I always want best player available regardless of position. You give me the player, I'll figure a way to get him in. So, to answer your question, Mike, if them guys are gone, what you said, Water would no question be the probably highest ranked player on the board. The question is, would the Cowboys stick to what Coach McCarthy said? And that is draft the best player available. I wouldn't like it though, because check it out. I'm not drafting nobody at 10 so he can be my fourth receiver. Waddle would not play in Cooper's spot. He wouldn't play in Gallup's spot. And he won't be playing the three receiver at, at, with C.D. Lamb. So he automatically be your four receiver. I realize he can punt return and kick return. I get you that. But you don't draft a guy at 10 to do that. You just don't. That's why it wouldn't make sense. Would it make our offense crazy? Oh, yeah, when you line up in a four-receiver set and you line all four of them up, oh, my goodness. Oh, yeah, that's trouble. I agree with you on that. I know what you're saying, but it just wouldn't make sense. The best players on need are, according to Paul, uh, or he's asking, to be honest with you, defense. We need, uh, we need, see, see, here, here, here's another theory, Paul. Help me out here. Here, 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 here's my, here's my other thing. Could it be that the Cowboys of our, may not be thinking like I am? I'm, I'm just saying this. My favorite college football team are the Michigan Wolverines. And please don't start with me. I live in Memphis, Tennessee. And somebody will be saying, and I live in Memphis all my life. And somebody will be saying, how in the world did you get to Michigan? How in the world did that happen? It's because I watched Anthony Carter in 1981 and 1982. That's how far I go back with Michigan Wolverine. 1981, 1982. I'm 40, how old am I? 48 years old. So as a kid, I'm watching Anthony Carter on TV. Now check it out. Because I'm a Michigan fan, I know about Jordan Lewis. That's what Jordan Lewis played ball. Jordan Lewis was a first-team All-American playing outside. He was not playing slot all his life. When he was in Michigan, he became a first-team All-American. Yeah, I saw Brady. Yeah, oh, yeah, Brady was Brady was just as clutch uh, back in college as he was as he is now. It it just didn't start in New England. We saw this all the time when he was in Michigan. No question about that. Jordan Lewis was a first-team All-American playing outside at corner. The Cowboys never 
gave Jordan Lewis the chance to play outside. Jordan could line up inside and out. As of right now, Jordan Lewis and Pat and Diggs are your two best corners right now. How, I'm just throwing out a theory. I don't think this is happening. Please don't think. I'm just saying, what if the Cowboys have already made a decision and say, we're going to start out with Jordan Lewis as our other corner? Do you draft a corner at 10 then? I'm just I'm just throwing something out there. I'm just throwing something out there. All we seen is Jordan play the slot. And Jordan is a dog. Jordan is good. Jordan can line up. He's just short. That's his only flaw. He's just a little short. But Jordan is rarely out of position. He's fast. He plays the ball. Jordan can play. I, I've seen it. And he can line up inside. Do we drive a corner then? I mean, see, when you drive a top 10, no, they haven't done. When you drive a 10, those guys are playing. I, I see Ekus. Ekus got a lot of, uh, y'all can see by the comment, Ekus got a lot of, lot of uh, confidence in Diggs. I said he's going to be a Pro Bowl corner. He could say he's going to the Hall of Fame. Okay. I ain't been arguing with you. Diggs is going to be good. Now, now, now let me go back to Paul because I want to answer his question. We need defense. Out of the three positions that we really need, impact, we really need it on the defensive line, but that's not going to be the, the answer because we signed all them free agents. So that's out. Though. That's out. So the question becomes the second level, which are our linebackers and cornerbacks. So the question is, what do we need the most, cornerbacks or linebackers? Sean Lee, I don't know why he ain't retired yet, but he ain't said it officially. And if he doesn't retire, we don't need to be law. And get let Sean Lee just play and all that. We need to we and if he does retire, and with the way the LV get LVE gets hurt, I believe we need linebacker. That'll be two corners. We need uh we need another. We need another good cornerback as our number two. I ain't say okay. We need a real good, and this could be solved with either Sertain, J.C. Horn, and Quiet as Y'all, I'm gonna throw another name out there. Now he ain't gonna be uh, picked up in the first round, but Asante Samuel Jr. Let me tell y'all something. Samuel's a dog. Samuel's a dog. Samuel's a dog. I don't know if y'all watched him, cornerback from Florida State. Uh, he's a dog. Paul, the reason why I'm not going to go with DT is because we already, we we too loaded. I mean, I ain't talking about it as far as great players. I'm just saying we got guys who are going to be on the team. Uh, Gallimore is going to be big this year. Uh, Hill is coming back. I'm Antoine Woods is still there, and now you done added all these other free agents. I mean, they're not, they're not, you know, that there is, is, is really no room. And if you draft them, I don't want to be drafting guys and they automatically go into the practice squad. I, I mean, come on, I want some impact. Oh, no question. But will he play? I, I see you, Paul, but will he play? So your starting your starting DTs barring injury next year is gonna be Hill and Gallimore. I'm just saying that that those gonna be your two starters. If we if 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 everybody's healthy, your two starters next year at DT is gonna be Tristan Hill. 
and Gallimore. With Woods coming in as a rotational piece. And possibly Gerald McCoy. I would love to have a, a big old guy, uh, a Sue or somebody like, you know, if you can find one that, that, that can play, that can clog it up. I, I love to have them. I'm just saying, the cow, you got to look, you got to throw in this loyalty that the Cowboys love to do. That when they get their law and they're going to put people in, just like if Sean Lee come back, they have Sean Lee starting next year, knowing they got killers on the sideline. I'm just saying, I agree with you, Paul. We need it, but loyalty, man, loyalty. They were loyal to Jason Witt and knew that Blake Jarvis was supposed to have been playing. You see what I'm saying? That's the kind of stuff I'm talking about. They're too loyal. Yeah, uh, there was a report that says Zeke is in the best shape of his life, Wendy. There are pictures of him. Zeke, Zeke really looks good. His calf is healed. He looks good. If Zeke comes back, motiv- and I'm quite sure he's going to be motivated. They all going to be motivated. Zeke should have a pretty good year. He should. Yeah, exactly. You're taking up a roster spot. That's 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 what Sean Lee is doing. That's what that's what I no, Paul. I can't no. We ain't giving Steven we ain't giving Steven Jones no credit on this show until he earns it. He's a part of the problem. Steven Jones is a part of that problem. That loyalty problem. No, 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 no. Steven Jones is a part of it. Uh everybody knew that that, that Jason Witten. God bless him. He's he's a he's a Hall of Fame tied in, but his time had passed. They let Jason Witten run the show and had Blake Job just coming in for six or seven plays, knowing he was more of a threat. Now he couldn't block like Witten. I get that, but he should have been on the field. Well, you you I think it's both of them, Paul. Jerry is the Lord, and Stephen is too. Stephen is too. Stephen is loyal to his system. His system is to draft and play and develop. Yeah, he, that that's that's what that's what that's what Stephen is loyal to. He don't believe in free agency, going to get big names. He believe in drafting your guy, get three, four good years, develop, 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 and develop. And then let's just see where we at. As much the Tristan Hill actually would show you that. To be honest with you, Tristan Hill. I mean, my God, two years ago, I don't even know how he stayed on the team. But it, but he stayed there. Okay, but uh, I, I don't know. We need it, but we ain't got it. We had a chance to. To go ahead and get what you're talking about, the one technique, we didn't get it. Certainly there were one techniques out there. We didn't get it. You could be getting it in the draft. Who knows? Yeah. No. The only person that they want loyal to was Dez Bryant. <laughs> Jerry made sure that when when they drafted the CD a couple of days later, he said he said he's gonna wear the number eighty eight. That right there was the end of Dez Bryant. They let you know he wasn't thinking about Dez. If he was thinking about Dez, he wouldn't even insult Dez by giving this number away. They weren't loyal. They weren't loyal to Dez like they were to Witten. Or uh, or Taco. I ain't want Taco in the friend. Taco came from Michigan. I ain't just, you know, Taco. I wanted TJ Watt instead of Taco myself. Uh, well, you know, where Paul was a money issue. You know, you know, when guys think they really still can play and, and you didn't want to pay them, that's how Emmett Smith ended up with an Arizona Cardinal uniform on. You know what I'm saying? Where he ended up in Denver. You know, you, these guys still think they got it. And in and, and, and Ware's case, he did still have it. 
Emmy still had a little gas left in the tank. Uh, Cheeto, I wish we would have kept Cheeto myself, but Cheeto wanted to get paid. Can't blame him. Hey, Cheeto wanted to get paid. That's why he left. It wasn't about winning because Cheeto went to Cincinnati. He know he's not going to win. So Cheeto just wanted to get paid. So he wanted to pay, get paid. I can't blame the brothers, uh, whoever it is, that want to get paid. I can't blame them. Look, this money got to last them the rest of their life. This little money they making, not let's say, a little money. This money they're making now, this is generational type money that has to, to last them the rest of their life. So some of them are thinking, look, I'm going to get as much as I can while I can. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't mad at Cheeto. I wish he would have stayed, but I understand. I understand why he left. I see, Paul, I can tell by your comment, you're glad he left too. <laughs> so let me get back to my thing, and I'll let y'all go for the night. Let's assume Pitts will not be there, okay? Let's say, let's say, and we got to keep our eye on this free agency thing because if we sign another cornerback, a real name like a Malcolm Butler, or it's a couple of them out there. If they if, if we sign another cornerback, we're not drafting at ten. But for this little segment, let's just say Sertain is there at ten. Slater is there at ten. Who we getting? Now, before y'all answer it, keep this in mind. Tyron Smith probably is not going to be playing with us probably in the next one or two. This may be Smith last year. Okay? Here's the other thing about Slater. You know, some of y'all don't know this. Here's the other thing about Slater. He can play guard. Slater can play guard. Okay, check it out. Which means this. If he can play guard, can y'all see Connor Williams coming out the starting star lineup and have Slater at left guard? Smith retires. Slater moves back to left tackle. Connor McGovern or whoever. Connor Williams is really a tackle. When he came out of college as an All-American out of Texas, he was a tackle. He can automatically become our swing tackle. He probably wouldn't like it, being that he was drafted in the second round. But if Slater is that dude like everybody say he is, and he can play guard, if he can play guard, y'all see everybody thinking about him being a tackle, he can play guard. I always thought that you're supposed to put your best five offensive linemen out there. If Slater can play guard, then your starting offensive line could very well be Tyler Bidass, or however how you pronounce his last name. Zach Martin at right guard, Lyle Collins at right tackle, Slater at left guard, Smith at left tackle. It's a pretty good starting five. Exactly, Paul. I like that because McGovern uh, actually played great, pretty good last year. I'm, I, I, so if if we at ten, and if if we do, well, well, let's just play it like this: if we don't draft, if we don't sign another cornerback, and Sertain and Slater are there, who are we picking? By our days. Right, there you go, Gary. Thank you. So somebody else got a nickname for him, but I ain't going to say it on Hey, Tommy, what's up, man? I ain't going to say it on, on the air. Y'all know what, 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 what the nick. Bad, bad A-Z-Z. Y'all know what it is. Who, who we picking? If Slater is there and Sertain is there, don't worry about who we got. Now, if we don't get a corner, I've already told you once in there, and that's Jordan Lewis going to move outside. Keep in mind, we got – there it is, Ecos. Uh, 
we are we keep in mind we still got Anthony Brown. Now, I, now y'all ain't gonna shout over Anthony Brown, okay? I ain't trying to get you to get hype about that. But here's one thing Brown can do. I ain't saying he's the greatest at it. I ain't saying he ain't bad either. He can play the slot corner position. So everybody that I'm looking at, he said, what if we pass on Slater and draft Alex Leatherwood? Would he be there in the second round, though, Gary? And we're picking – what's what's our pick at second round? Is that 40? No. Is that 40 in the second round? Would he be there at 40, Gary? Gary, I don't know. I don't think Leatherwood would be there. I don't think he would be there at 40. Everybody, I'm surprised. Everybody is saying Slater. Wow. Okay. And I ain't seen nobody say certain. At 44, 38 or 39. We 42. I'm I'm assuming all y'all throwing out different numbers. So it, it's it seems like we definitely in the 40s for sure for picking in the second round. So my question is, do you think Leatherwood would last that long? I don't think so. Wendy says Wendy is the only one that says certain. All my everybody else said Slater. Okay, let's go with this, and then I'll let you guys alone. Since all of y'all saying Slater, what are we doing for corner? If 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 you guys are saying Slater at 10, what what are we doing? Who's our number two corner? I just make it. I I I just say it like that. Who's our Who's our number two corner? Yeah, Tommy, we're gonna get a bag of quarterback, but that'll be way down in the draft. We talking about the fourth, fifth round, maybe before we if we go get a uh, a, a quarterback. Y'all help me out here. If you're saying Slater, what are we doing at corner? Are we just staying within? Or y'all depending on uh okay. Okay, I like that. Uh Gary said Slater at 10, Samuel, Sante Samuels Jr. or Debo Paulson later on in the draft. But are they gonna be your starters though, Gary? Like I see I I, I like it, but are you are you drafting them to be your number two corner or are they coming in battling? Or are we going within to be our, our starting number two corner? Tommy said they need to go out to Sam Ellinger. Tommy, you stay in Texas. You just partial. <laughs> Tommy, you partial. You like saying you, 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 pro- I believe you stay in Texas. So, of course, you're going to say I'm Sam Ellinger. To be honest with you, if we were to get a quarterback, it would be uh, somebody like the kid from Texas A&M, probably. Uh, Bond, I think that's his last name. Somebody like that. I don't think we want a, a real pocket quarterback. Yeah, I know, Tommy. I, I peeped your game out real quick. I know how you are. If it was up to you, you had a whole University of Texas Longhorn team as Dallas Cowboys. I know how you are. I'll go Slater first, Paul says. Dylan Moses and Shelvin third. My only question to you, Paul, is, Who's our who's our second cornerback? Who's our second cornerback? If you was to go there, are you staying within? Are you saying what, Anthony Brown or or Jordan Lewis at the number two cornerback? I'm assuming that's what you're saying. <laughs> Thomas said Jerry not gonna draft a Longhorn. <laughs> uh, hold on, we got a Texas fight going on. Paul says he's from Texas but went to SMU. I believe the Longhorns are soft. Oh, Lord. Here we go. I got in Paul and Tommy for the have it out. I'm, I'm going to ignore y'all while y'all battle it out. I, I can already see it. Y'all just keep it clean here. Y'all, <laughs> y'all keep it clean. Don't, don't be going crazy. We'll be in zone so Lewis and Brown are serviceable. Okay. I personally have a lot of confidence in Jordan Lewis. Exactly. Sammy Jr. is better than Brown right now. I ain't sold on Andrew Brown. Haven't been. 
Uh, so it's, it's about the Pony Express. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, yeah, he, yeah, yeah. So you can't put all these Texas. See, I, you know, I'm from Memphis, so I, I don't have the deep roots hatred and and despise. You know that that Texas fans have. You know that them guys. You know they different. Uh, exactly. My mama here, Trevon Moy. I like him, Gary. It's not out of the question, even though he's a safety. Man, look. If we get Trayvon, man, look here. Woo-wee. In just in case y'all don't know, he's a kid from T, uh, TCU, Texas Christian uh, University. Man, he's a dog. He's a dog. I, I would love to have him. Uh, so I don't think no. Yeah, see, see, Tommy and, and, and uh, Paul. Going at it, yeah, yeah. See, here you go. Uh, see, oh, Paul hate to see y'all Texas people. I appreciate y'all. All y'all Texas people. One thing about y'all, y'all, y'all. When y'all lock in on one team, y'all stay there, and everybody else, y'all just can't. Y'all can't stand them. But Paul got sense though, because when you brought out Trayvon Moore, he, he even know. See there, he said he wouldn't mind that safety in the cow you know, because he's a dog. He's a dog. Part being y'all on here and y'all ain't saying nothing to me. I, I, I'm, I'm impressed. Hey, Ebony and Ebonics, Blue, uh, QMV, Adiva, Carl, Carlos. I'm just popping in and out. Ain't nobody saying nothing. Do y'all know? Hey, who else on here? Mr. Ty, I see you here. Uh, it's only two people on there right now. I thought nine of y'all in there. That's what it said. Okay. Uh, look at that. Paul said, I, that's how bad it is. TCU, Dalton is from TCU. He said, I was sick last year having the roof of Dalton. See how bad it is? That, 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 that your hatred for your college football hatred didn't allow you to cheer for Andy Dalton, who was wearing a cowboy star on his head. That's how bad y'all are. Paul, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Time, look at Tommy. Y'all text it. Look, y'all take. I, I I hate to see if we draft somebody from Oklahoma. Let me ask y'all this as y'all going there. What y'all feel about Gallimore? What do y'all feel about C.D. Lamb? Do, I, I, are, y'all, are y'all throwing up because I just said they name? Huh? Because y'all know where they went. They went to Oklahoma. See, just saying Oak. If I just say Oak. They gonna start throwing it up. See, see right there. See, you couldn't root for it, and he had TCU. See, and, and that that's purple and white and all that. I know you don't like nobody from Oklahoma now. See, I know y'all don't like them. See, I, right? Y'all don't even want to type now. Y'all, <laughs> y'all don't even want to type. See, 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 see. They, 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 they. I, look, I said Gallimore. They, 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 they just stopped typing. If I said C.D. Lamb. See, see right there? See, see, Tommy? I, I ain't like him old use. See, it, you probably don't like him now. Tommy, you probably don't like CD now. It, them, them roots are deep. I know it. It's just like me. I, I'm a Cowboy fan. Uh, I don't like nobody in our division. That's deep. And it's two other teams that I, if you're a real Cowboy fan, I do not like the Pittsburgh Steelers. And I do not like the San Francisco 49ers. See, Paul, there it is. See that? Paul said Oklahoma. He said that they have to fumigate the Cotton Bowl out after the Red River shootout. For those that don't know what the Red River shootout is, is when Oklahoma and Texas play. It's, that's called the Red River shootout. And Paul here is saying that they had to fumigate the place, had to spray lights off, disinfect it. Raid. Uh, uh, what's the other stuff? Uh, pine saw. <laughs> Man, look, pine saw on 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 football field. That's crazy, but it just sounds right. At least the feel the smell better. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, they had to do all that. So they haven't. Look at that. No shoes, no service. See what I'm saying? They got. They they have problems. See that they joining in together now. See, I brought them together. The fight is over. I said Oklahoma. Paul and Tommy are together right now. 
See what I'm saying? They don't like C.D. Lamb. They don't like Alamo. They, they, they just tolerating them. See? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They laughing right now. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm just, uh, look, I'm just East MCing the fight. I, I'm, I'm calling the fight. It ain't no fight no more. It ain't no fight no more. I brought them together by by saying Oklahoma's, uh, Oklahoma, uh, Oklahoma football players, they're on the Dallas Cowboy team. As great as C.D. Lamb is, these two young men, oh, look, look. <laughs> Paul said, I love C.D. Lamb and Gallimore. Now, <laughs> he put nine caps. So he love them now, see? See? But 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 here, here's our thing. <laughs> Tommy said, I ruined our normal steakhouse. <laughs> Ran out because they had a long horse shirt on. See, they can't eat meals down there, see? They can't even eat dinner because they come in with the wrong stuff on. That's how bad it is. I don't want to live down there. I I I don't even want to live down there because you know, y'all 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 serious down there. It, 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 I'm serious too, but it's something about Texas, Oklahoma that just it it it, it bring out the worst in you, folks. It it, it make you want to fight, make you want to just just walk in. You see a guy if you're from Oklahoma, you see a guy with a Texas Longhorn shirt on. The man will say, "Good evening, how you doing?" The person would immediately just start cussing them out. Don't even know the name. <laughs> don't don't know what. Don't know nothing about them. Just just start cussing. What's good about it? Good good evening. What's good about it? See what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. Like yeah, they hate them on sight. That's how they are. And, 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 I, and I'm just glad we just we got it all straight here today. I'm glad we got it all straight today. I got them on one accord. But according to, let me get back on 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 the road here. According to what most of you are saying, I'm assuming that if you guys are picking Slater, then you're willing to to really not change nothing too much from our secondary. You're gonna put the trust in in Brown or Jordan Lewis. That's 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 what I'm gathering. And and you don't even want you don't even want uh Sir Tang. I'm gonna be honest with you. When it comes to Sir Tang, he would improve the defense. Let's not get let's not get crazy now. Yeah. He would improve it. But the question is, is there such a gap between Sir Tain and Jordan Lewis as your cornerback? I, is there is there just a gigantic gap there? And I don't think it is. Slater is, as Gary said, Slater is the the safe. Come on, help me here, Wendy. Slater is the safe, vanilla, safe, conservative. Great pick. It very, it's not. It's not gonna make you just run through a wall and go crazy. And say, "Woo, we got Slater! Yeah, yeah, we got Slater! We got him!" You ain't gonna do all that. You just gonna shake your head. You are gonna say, "Yeah, that was that was a pretty good uh, pick. Slater's a good pick." You know, it won't be, won't be no crazy enthusiasm. See if you get exactly when. If you get pits, oh, we 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 celebrating in the streets. Oh, oh we 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 going crazy. Yeah. If if we get certain, it's gonna be some folks that are gonna say, yeah, woo we we got certain, yeah. If you get Slater, you're gonna say, hey, uh, you know, you know, Slater, pretty good pick. You know, he he's he's you know, it's not sexy, but you know, it's a good pick. Your voice octaves won't raise up. Yo, you 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 be real quiet about it. He's oh, okay, and you'll say, "Well, we got Slater, so uh, I guess we're gonna address defense in the second and second and third and fourth round." That's not what you'll be saying. You ain't gonna have all this 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 rambunction for Slater. But 
It might be the best pick of value. It might be the best pick. It might be. Now, some of y'all going to say I sound confusing because I done threw out all my scenarios. Let me just put it like this. I won't be mad if we pick Slater. I would not be mad if we picked up Sertain. And I definitely won't be mad if Pitts is there. I definitely would not be mad if Pitts is there. I'm not going to be mad. However, there is one scenario that will make me mad. Now I'll close with this. Why would we trade back? Why, why would we trade back? Y'all, y'all come on here. Some of y'all want y'all, some of y'all want to trade back. Some of y'all want to trade back. I, I believe it. I, I wouldn't like that. Not at 10. When you're in the top 10, you go in and draft. When you're at 10, you go in and draft. Unless you unless it's an offer that you just can't refuse. Exactly. It's some folks that want it's some folks that want to trade back. Oh, oh well, Don, I even Don, I even say that. But my God, let, let, let me let, let me say this. Since Donna just put there, I don't think it will happen, but if Sewell failed to us, let me tell y'all something. And it is gonna really mess you up. Wendy, you listening? If Penel Sewell fall to 10, which will not happen. But if he did, there's some there's some drafts that have Sewell. Drafting it, I mean, dropping at least to nine. Let me say this if Sewell drops to 10, I don't care if Pitts is there at 10. We draft Sewell. Do y'all hear me? This is a Sewell and Pitts are Hall of Fame caliber type guys. Guys like Sewell and Pitts don't come around but once every 20, 25 years. That's how good Sewell is. Sewell is going to be a Pro Bowl left tackle in his very first year. Guarantee, barring injury. Exactly, Paul. That's how good he is. I ain't saying Pro Bowl level. I'm not saying All Pro level. I'm telling you right now, if you get if Sewell Panea Sewell falls to ten, it is as quick as they say. Uh, the Dallas Cowboys are on the clock at number ten. As soon as they get that ten out, the card need to be in two seconds later. We ain't got to wait the for the uh, two minutes, however many minutes it is. If Sewell is there. Soon as you say the Cowboys are on the clock, when they can't come out, the car should already be in. Just that quick. Just that, I mean, that's how quick it ought to be. Panay Sewell should be picked up immediately. There is no question. That's how good he is. And I'm taking him over Pitts, Sertain, Slater, everybody else. It, it ain't even a thought. That's how good he is. But that's why he's not going to be there. Because <laughs> everybody else know that too. Okay? I'll close with that uh, tonight. Do you cut Smith if we get Sewell? Mm. Uh, we trade Smith. Trade Smith still got a lot of trade value. Everybody knows that if Smith is healthy, He's a one of the top two or three tackles in the game. Still, you can trade. You can trade Smith and get some for him. 
But you're not dragging Sewell to sit on no bench. It don't make no difference. It don't make no difference. Sewell is a once in a generation uh, tackle. That's how good he is. Oh, and oh, I totally forgot about that, Gary. Thank you. Y'all, in case y'all didn't know, Sewell can play guard too. <laughs> I mean, good Lord. Woo. Can you imagine on your left side, Panay or Sewell and, and, and Tyron Smith? Oh, my God. Well, oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, you talking about a whooping. You talking about running the football. Oh, my God. Oh. Boy, that, that just made me smile, even though I know it ain't going to happen, but you can dream. <laughs> I heard you uh, earlier. I think that was uh, Donald said anything can happen. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, 250 may be. It's going to be more than that, Paul. Okay, uh, thank you, Wendy. We'll see you on Saturday. All right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Zeke had to run for 2,000 yards. You get sued. He'll have his first 2,000 yard rushing season. He'll lead the league in rushing, barring injury. No question about it. No question about it. Those are just scenarios. I don't think that's going to happen, though. Sue won't be there. But this Slater certain thing, I think that's where I really believe that's where we're coming to. I really do believe that's where the pick would be at. Slater or certain. I really believe that's where, where, where we're going. Appreciate you, Donald. Everybody getting ready to leave me, so I'm going to leave y'all too. I keep saying I'm through. I'm through now, for real. Uh, listen, appreciate you guys so much for hanging with me. Look, if you want to become a patron on my show, there it is on your screen. Uh, Dollar Sign, the big time show. Any support would be great. Uh, I put you into my bit uh, the big time show podcast group that we have, uh, and you can be there. And uh, it's, I put little messages in on that uh, where you can uh, interact with me one on one. If you're on Podbean, you know that all you have to do is push that button that says "Become a Patron." That you should be seen. All you have to do is hit that and follow those simple instructions. You too can become a patron of the show. Uh, again, dollar sign, the big time show. Uh, this is not my primary job. I told you guys, uh, before it's just a hobby of mine that's turning into something else. And I'm not mad at the work of God, uh, blessing the podcast. Listen, also, before we leave, I am on all of these, uh, platforms here that you see on your screen. I'm on Google podcast, Spotify, Pandora, iHeartRadio, uh, Twitter, LinkedIn and Tumblr. Uh, the Big Time Show podcast is on all of those uh, formats as well. Uh, I hope that you guys uh, will, if you all have those accounts, why don't you just go ahead and follow it uh, there and that way you can listen to me at any time. You can't listen to me live on those, uh, but the show will be uploaded as soon as we get finished uh, with our live shows. So join me on this Saturday at three o'clock this Saturday at three o'clock, I will be with you again. And let's see if there's some more cowboy news between now and Saturday. I got a feeling it will be. And you know, if there is some news, we're going to talk about it here at the big time show podcast. Uh, but if there's not no more news, guess what? There's plenty of news in cowboy land. Every day is something. So I'll see you guys at 3 PM. Thanks for hanging with me. Uh, for this time period, uh, I'll see you guys at 3 p.m. Uh, this Saturday, and you know where it is, y'all. No question about it. This is the Big Time Show.